So not only did I get COVID this week, but the video that I actually spent my lockdown finishing has been blocked worldwide due to copyrighted footage. Thanks, Warner Brothers. Is this because of what I said about Space Jam 2? Game Station was the best. Look, I'm biased on this video, but I loved this store. It was the best retail store for video games that the UK ever had to offer. It beat CEX or SEX or whatever you want to call it, and it beat Game. The store so dedicated to video games, it was just called Game. But the Taylor Game Station is a tragedy of errors. It was said that you would destroy this and not join them. And in this video essay, mini documentary, whatever the hell we call these random videos I make, I'll take a look back at the birth and death of Game Station. And if you've been on YouTube long enough to know what I'm talking about, no, not that Game Station. Game Station was originally conceptualized by Stephen Hall and Julian Gladwin, who founded the company in York, England in 1993. Compared to others, their growth was fairly restrained as they grew to 63 stores after nine years. This was two years after the PS2 launched and became the best-selling console in history for a good while, so it's no surprise that the 2000s would be where GameStation began to expand. I'll be playing this all day tomorrow, and uh, I've got the weekend as well, and I, I think I might book next week off as well. So there was another reason that led to their expansion. An American company called Blockbuster, maybe you've heard of them? They could do with their own video at some point. Bought GameStation in 2002 and put an obscene amount of money behind the advertising campaign. Part of this marketing spend featured Andy Huntington's very effective We Understand Mums ad campaign, which uh, reflects the fear that we all have when an older family member tries to buy a game. Polish Revolution Football Four. <laughs> oh, Pro Evolution Soccer Four. Oh, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. Come to Game Station, because we understand mums. Until 5pm, Sunday the 21st of November, you'll save £13 on our Steel of the Week. Though... The money spent wasn't the only thing obscene about these advertisements. GameStation's advertising was infamously pretty close to the knuckle, with gems such as Shoot Yer Load and Cheaper Than a Ho Ho Ho, but arguably their most famous ad campaign was their Christmas character. He's me, Fat Chris! Go Lionel, he's not half time, but it is half price. Pro Evo 2009, only 19.99. Get in! This week only at GameStation. Game Station! Gaming for less this Christmas! Fat Chris was the most hardcore gamer, and while the concept of a funny fat gamer was nothing new, the amount they got away with showing on TV was frankly criminal. I've had to change the music in this advert I'm about to show you, and I might have to even censor some of it, but just know that the original version was completely uncensored. It's a bit... raunchy, shall we say. Who will you find in Lapland this Christmas? Chris! That's certainly one niche to try and fill, but luckily it worked. And GameStation took off with competitive pricing and a massive ad campaign. I dropped my pencil. There were also a few bonus things that were only available for GameStation, including, and this is interesting, a Metal Gear Solid 4 custom watch, which now retails for... <coughs> They soared to the top of the games industry market with only one entity being ahead of them in terms of market share. Game. Remember them? In 2006, Blockbuster had debts in the region of $560 million and began shutting down all the outlets that weren't branded as Blockbuster. This led many people to assume that GameStation was going under, but in fact, this wasn't true. GameStation was one of the only Blockbuster-owned outlets that was actually making money. This core mismanagement on Blockbuster's part was closing GameStation stores despite them doing well, 
And I feel this was kind of the beginning of the end for the brand at large. Uh, both of them. About a year later, Blockbuster announced that they had sold Game Station Limited to, who else? Game. The acquisition cost Game around £75 million, but it gave them control over 217 Game Station stores. Interestingly, however, this didn't include branches of Game Station which operated inside of a Blockbuster store, as Blockbuster would maintain the rights to run these stores. So that's one outlet owned by two different companies operating in two different ways. Yeah, funnily enough, this didn't last long, and Blockbuster opted instead to just completely rebrand all their Game Station stores as Blockbusters. There was a lot of creativity in the video game retail market in the late noughties, let me tell you. With this recipe for success, I mean, how could GameStation possibly fail? There was no way that two years later GameStation's HQ in Basingstoke closed. This is a great sign. In 2012, the GameStation website was run exclusively by Game, and the GameStation identity was sadly no more. This came shortly after they announced that they would no longer stock new titles from EA. EA had actually refused to give Game or GameStation reduced rates or rebates when selling their games, which meant they didn't consider it worthwhile to sell EA games. This was a week before Mass Effect 3 launched and went on to sell nearly 2 million copies opening week. Probably not the best idea to not stock one of the most hyped games of the generation, but uh, what do I know? The story of Game Station is an out and out tragedy as far as I'm concerned. I remember taking in my chunkster of a DS and trading it in for a sleek new DS Lite when it came out. I remember buying so many games on the PS2 for their 5 for £10 deal. And of course, I sold them my soul. Yeah, if you wanted to know more about how uncorporate Game Station ran their business, and, you know, if this kind of stuff wasn't making it clear, these guys sneakily added a clause into their terms and conditions saying that they would legally own the souls of all customers who didn't manually opt out of the clause. If you did opt out, they offered you a £5 gift card, which is, you know, nice. But that didn't stop 88% of customers selling their souls to Game Station, which I probably did too. Does that mean game now owns my sh Thank you so much for watching this video. I wish I had a happier note to end it on, but unfortunately that's just where the story ends, you know? Uh, I wanted to get this video out because I knew it would be a shorter video and it's something I'm super passionate about. And I was hoping I could get it out so that it wouldn't feel too terrible that I'd spent so much time making a Ted Lasso video just for it to get fucking flagged and blocked worldwide. And if you have any stories about GameStation or feedback about the video, please leave a comment and let me know. If you liked the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it around. I'm a small channel trying to grow from scratch, so I really appreciate that. Uh, I also have a coffee account if you really like these videos and think that you might want to throw some money towards it, but there's certainly no obligation to do that. I don't expect anybody to pledge, and I don't blame anyone for not wanting to at this stage. Uh, I don't make money off YouTube anyway. I'm too small a channel and there's too many content ID vultures, so it doesn't really matter, but it, the option's there if you'd like to. For now, thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weirdly niche retrospectives in the future. And I'll see you next time. Yeah.